Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Terrence Bud Crawford getting his Jeffersons on. We have a moving on up. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the notification gang, bang, bang, gang, gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the super chat, the channel donations, and the Patreon family. We working now. I covered Terrence Crawford's last fight. Had a great time. Um, I've watched several Terrence Crawford cover several of his fights as medium. Three, I think, were in Omaha. Seen him uh, fight Postal in Vegas. The kid can scrap. What I like about Crawford is he's a throwback fighter. You know what I mean? Like, he reminds me of, not his fighting style, but he reminds me of Tim Bradley when Tim Bradley was fighting Casamayor and Kendall Holt and all these guys. Like, Bradley didn't really care. He was, he was, the, the money's right, the paycheck's right, let's scrap. You know what I mean? And it's, it's funny because I just seen him post. I guess Bradley had a, he's retired now, but he had some kind of surprise party. And Terrence Crawford put a nice message just on his social media saying he met him a few years back. Obviously, they sparred together. And that's really how Terrence Crawford got put on with Cameron Duncan and stuff. That, that Bradley's career was further along in that word of mouth. Bradley was just really co-signed. Like, man, this kid Crawford can really scrap. Now, Terrence Crawford on his verified social media, he says, I'm hungry and I need it all. Hashtag 147. So... Not really a surprise. Like I said, I covered his fight, and he was talking about moving up after the fight. Like I said, the Jefferson style. Moving on up, and he, he said he would love to fight Keith Thurman. I don't know the logistics with Al Heyman working with Bob Arum and top rank. Besides, Keith Thurman just got married, and he's been injured. So we don't know the likelihood that that'll happen. I personally don't think Keith Thurman is going to come back this year. I think 2018 will, will probably be when he's back. Who knows? You know what I mean? Getting married, going honeymoons, and having time off for the injury. Who knows what type of weight he's picked up. You know what I mean? Because that weight cut could be crucial. So I don't see that Crawford fight happening. But I really like, man, Crawford's a throwback fighter. I just, I, I like, he, he's a highly skilled person, and he has the right mentality. And that'll get you far. You're ambidextrous, you can fight, but you also have it up top. So to me, he's looking like... A real complete fighter even though he's, he's still pretty young in his career we've seen the ending of Floyd's career last week with Mayweather McGregor I was out there covering that fight and Terrence Crawford to me is one of the new breeds I don't know if he can um, climb the same mountains as Floyd in terms of pay-per-view stardom and all that but just in terms of carrying the torch and being hard to beat and cementing his legacy even more and more as he goes on I think he could definitely do that he has a good shot at that a great shot at that so it'll be interesting. Me personally, I, I think I think the move makes sense. A lot of people see some people are acting shocked that he, he's he's tweeting about I want it all at 147. But if you pay attention, I mean, this is what he told you. He told you the gameplay. He said he was moving up. He said he's going to get with his team, and then after he said he was moving up, right? And he's called Keith Thurman out a couple times. And same thing with the undisputed. People were like, Oh, why didn't you make a video? He vacated his IBF belt. Because to me, that there was a lot of stuff going on, maybe with Mayweather, McGregor, or whatever fight, and there's a lot of other pressing news that wasn't really news to me. I, I mean, I figured that, and the IBF was trying to make him fight a mandatory within a certain amount of time. He just came off a fight, and if you know you're moving up, then it doesn't even make sense to why fight a mandatory, especially when it's a mandatory without a big name. So it's not like it's going to be a huge paycheck. It's not like Broner is the mandatory. So if you fight him. You get a, a huge paycheck attached with it. So, I mean, it makes sense. He he, he achieved what he wanted. He, he set that history for the 140-pound division, became undisputed, which hasn't been done since, like I said, Bernard Hopkins, Jermaine Taylor. So that's it. I mean, you've already done the deed. You can't even if you have to give away a belt after. It's just like when Tyson Fury, he beat Klitschko, and he got the IBF belt, and they kind of did the same thing, try to promptly make him fight for the IBF. And he ended up, I guess, signing on to fight Klitschko in a rematch per rematch clause. And the IBF stripped him, which was really stupid because it's like, I don't know. Uh, maybe Tyson Fury didn't go through the proper channels, but that just seemed really 
fair unfair how quickly he got stripped you know what i mean this was a while ago so i'm not really here to go back in time and, and look at the details but all i know is he got stripped and charles martin and glaskov or whatever his name is end up fighting for the vacant belt glaskov got injured in the fight and charles martin beat him and then later lost to anthony joshua and that's how joshua became champion so i mean like i said none of that really matters he did the th he did the damn thing became undisputed enhanced his pound for pound presence it is what it is and he's moving up so like i said if you're moving up you know you're moving up he has the frame to move up it doesn't matter you already accomplished undisputed and who next you know what i'm saying what's next for me my my honest opinion i i okay first of all i'm a boxing fan so if he can get in there with errol spence next and all this like crazy fight danny garcia and these huge mega fights by all means because those are good paychecks and he has a good chance to beat really anybody just based on the skill set however i honestly for his first fight i don't see top rank really doing that because sometimes i think the fighter might want it but the direction of his team and, and promoter and handlers and manager they might not want it they didn't even want terence crawford to fight Bradis prescott because it was he would have to move up which he moved up in weight he was fighting at 35 he had to fight Bradis prescott if i'm not mistaken at 140. it was last minute notice so he only had two weeks to prepare and he basically told his people like no i, I got this this is this is some easy work and luckily he did it because that kicked off his career like oh damn you know what i mean you have to give him credit now Speaking of British Prescott, it reminds me of something else because I was going to say Amir Khan got knocked out by British Prescott earlier, years before. Things had changed, but Terrence Crawford still fought him and didn't get knocked out. So, I mean, that was a, it's an impressive feat. We know British Prescott, if you're slipping, I mean, he, he got cracked. I mean, Mike Alvarado was in trouble with him too. Had his lip all cut up. But speaking of British Prescott and Amir Khan, somebody sent me Amir Khan. There's like a tweet and Terrence Crawford said he's moving up to 47 and it's like there's a fake Amir Khan profile and it's like it's dangerous up here and I'm like oh shit and then I look further in, into it and they spelled Khan with two N's K-H-A-N-N -N. and it's not Khan of the real Amir Khan because the real Amir Khan has a verified account with the blue check mark and this one doesn't so there was a lot of people I've seen some people even on Instagram I think posting about it that's not the real Amir Khan, so you got to just make sure you do the fact checkers, um, because if you know, I mean, that would be a hell of a story if Amir Khan really tweeted what the fake Amir Khan account said, because he just it was it basically sounded like a threat. Like, are you sure you want to move up? It's dangerous up here. That would be a crazy fight. But anyway, back to what I was saying. I think I think Crawford should take. I don't know if he should just go after the gusto and besides go after the gusto like a champion or whatever i know that's what he wants because he said that's what he wants i don't know the logistics behind it because most of the champions are without Heyman. you know what i mean errol spence keith thurman and even the other notable guys former champions like danny garcia and names like that but i think he me personally i i think it, it would just to see how you would deal with the division maybe fight like a diego chavez that's a person that comes to mind diego chavez see how you do with somebody like that um a guy who has some power at 147 who can box who can bang just acclimate yourself maybe at least just one fight but i mean crawford he's been doing this so he might want to go straight away i'm just giving you my opinion if i was crawford's uh, manager or something but him and bo mack and top rank and his cameron duncan i think he's still with them his team they're going to decide what's next for him but i think i think I, I think it would be smart to get one in fight um you know I me mean, a top top rated guy even maybe like an adrian granados at 47 granados gave broner a good run for his money something like that i think that would be a good fight and granados has several fights a couple fights at least at 147 so something like that granados diego chavez just a rugged tough tough guy guy with some power and then get acclimated and then start trying to gun for the champions but like i said it's terrence crawford is a beast and i mean sometimes people want what they want i'm just telling you my honest assessment and my opinion and that's not out of fear that's just you got to be boxing people a lot of people in boxing like fan wise they don't want to be realistic at all they want to see you move up and immediately fight the number one person like there's times where it happens but more often than not when you just radically jump up without proving you're the best or you know what i'm saying it, it a lot of times it doesn't work now even andre ward andre ward 
first fight at the full light heavyweight was Sullivan Brer. He knocked him down and beat him. I was at that fight. I was at the Alexander Brand fight, and I was at the both Kovalev. I've, I've covered Ward's last four fights, five fights, something like that. And um, that made sense, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to just straight away go and fight Kovalev. Kovalev already gave you a tough as nails first fight, you know what I'm saying? So give yourself a little bit of time to acclimate to the weight. And, and it looked like by the time he had the rematch with Kovalev, he looked like his body was more... He like I was at his media day and stuff, and he looked way more full and ready. He looked, he just looked overall better and more like a light heavyweight than he did when I seen him fighting Sullivan Brer. Sullivan Brer looked a lot bigger than him, you know, I me mean, at the media day for that fight, stuff like that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like I said, more often than not, Ward's kind of an anomaly type of fighter. Like he just has the willpower and determination. But a lot of times when guys move up and their first fight is, is like one of the top two people in the division. It usually doesn't pan out. Now, Crawford's very skilled, so it might pan out for him. But, I, like, Brandon Rios moved up, fought Pacquiao, also a loss. And it just, he, he ended up getting dominated. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just became undisputed. You're the man at 140. Fight a Granados. Fight a, a Diego Chavez or somebody you can get. Which, those fights are probably easier to make, right? And then, from that point on, then, then you um, start trying to the gun down the champions but like i said maybe crawford has a different plan and he just feels in his mind he already knows that he's ready for top dogs so just give me my thoughts let me know your thoughts crawford planning on taking over the 147 video the 147 division a lot of a lot of great matches i can already think of um i don't know if mikey garcia mikey garcia was talking about fighting Cotto at 54 so maybe maybe mikey garcia versus crawford at 47 i would love it danny garcia at 47 i would love it Broner at 47, I would love it. Keith Thurman, champion at 47, two belts, I would love it. Pacquiao, don't look like he's trying to fight. Um, Bob Aramarty said Jeff Horn is not going to be next for Crawford. So I thought that would have been a good match to to start off your welterweight career. Errol Spence is up there, but we'll see. We'll see what's next for him and who's available. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. The next video is Ego Sign up. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.